So I hope you've enjoyed the conference so far and you get a lot out of it. So I'm Youth Focus Northeast and the presentation is around climate change and long people's responses. So lovely. So my name's Laura Bush and I'm Youth Focus Northeast. For those who aren't aware who we are, we're a regional youth work unit and we cover the Northeast. Um, there is other versions of us in the different regions of England, and our role is to offer infrastructure support to the youth work sector, sector. But we also do a lot of direct delivery. So, for example, we do open access. So, at East Middlesbrough at the moment, we open, we have youth clubs. Obviously, in COVID land, things are run a little bit differently, but normally we have a, a youth club provision most nights. We do social action projects, we do intergenerational, offer training, young people and workers. So today we're going to be looking at climate change, we'll look at young people's views and responses, and we're going to think about what young people are saying, how they're tackling climate change, and look at how youth voice can be part of that. Oh, there we are. So starting off with Youth Focus North based, a programme called the North East Youth Lines, which is started this year in partnership for North East at uh, any youth. And I the two organisations come together to get some funding to develop and sustain organisations across the North East to bring those together like minded who, who want to work together and support young people. Um, a big part of the program is young people's voices heard and we have youth, work, uh, youth voice workers who could be leading on that. But at the moment they are doing consultation with young people and staff all around how young people should shape this program so it's really open to how to let them decide so thinking about youth voice as a general term it's more than just letting young people have their voice heard it's more just giving them a space to talk it's actually encouraging support them to make those changes i'm sure you've heard of heard of greta thunberg she's probably been spoke about in this conference already she's a prime example of if you give a young person a microphone how far they can go with. So she has challenged world leaders. She's challenged their action plans. They said they need to do more. So one of her quotes I really liked, she said last year to world leaders is, we showed that we are united and that we young people are unstoppable. And I think she had a really good point there that actually give young people the far the chance to go really far, they can achieve a lot. And she's just one of many, many examples out there how young people can really get their voice heard but actually make change. So the idea of this workshop is to look at examples and then if we have time I'd love to hear all your, your examples of changes young people trying to make a change. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through a couple of some are local and some are from different regions of the country just to kind of give people a flavour of what's going on there at the moment uh, and like I said if we have time I'd love to hear your examples. So the first one is from Newcastle University. So on the different courses, the, unit, the students need to do a paper. So three students came to us this year because they wanted to look at youth activism and how young people are part of climate change. But they're quite interested on the social economic side of it and how that might influence how young people get involved in climate change. So the three students connected with Youth Focus Northeast and did focus groups and surveys uh, to young people across the Northeast. And from them, they made some, they found some key facts and additions to us. So I'm going to share those with you all. I keep pressing the wrong button to go next. Here we are. So education. So they found that actually young people, the, the young people they spoke to, said that they don't get much out of school in terms of climate change. Not all schools are actually putting that on the agenda for young people. They recognise some are, but the people they spoke to, they didn't feel like their school did enough on climate change. And they felt like they didn't have much opportunity to get to take part in climate change projects. Um, so what they found is that actually we need to do more with young people, especially those who are going to go to education. The students found from the university that actually those who from more disadvantaged backgrounds tend to not take part in climate change type projects. However, those say might who might go to university or are in university a lot a lot more proactive and want to take part in these programmes. So they felt that there was a bit of a gap there. They also looked at income and they found that uh, those young people come from families 
who earn less than 25,000, actually their accessibility and their engagement in climate change projects and protests, things like that, are really low. The young people who took part in surveys and the focus groups particularly were saying that actually they have bigger concerns, they need to find work, they might go with finances, uh, they might struggle with housing or living chaotic lifestyles. So actually taking part in a climate change programme is actually on the bottom list. So what the students found that actually a big gap between the young people taking part and the, from the different backgrounds. The next finding was on gender. From those they spoke to, it was more like young women were going to take part. They're more likely to be part of any sort of climate change type projects than young men. So they found actually if you're trying to get the, a representation of young people, you, you're missing a lot of young men's point of view on climate change, not taking part and they're not engaging, especially across the northeast. And their final um, finding was actually young people find a lot of their information on social media, which isn't really news to us who work with young people, get a lot of information on there, but they don't tend to go anywhere else for it. So what they recommended and thought about the students was actually maybe we could do social media a bit better and get those points. So rather than the fake news going around, get some really good stories and really clear and use social media. And that's really accessible for young people. So a couple of recommendations they set to Northeast is to look at engage more males, utilise social media more. And then also offering opportunities for people to get involved. So creating maybe some workshops and um, some projects. But think about those who wouldn't normally engage with um, climate change type projects. So maybe those who come from maybe young carers. So maybe uh, expo reach on these sort of projects. So a next project I want to talk about is actually One Planet Pioneers. And you may have heard of it. Well, it's been delivered for five years and it was in a partnership. So it's Tees Valley Wildlife Trust and Middlesbrough Environmental City. And you can see on the screen the aims of the project was social cohesion between young people and their communities. They wanted to they added employability skills into this and um, upskilled young people through lots of training and courses. They wanted to support young people in their build their confidence, their self-esteem and build resilience in young people. And they also offered one off test sessions and events so young people could try, try out different um, elements of different employment. So this young person was on their youth board as part of the program as a youth board. So this is one of the youth board members. They felt that the project helped make a difference um, in their local community. It enabled them to pinpoint problems that they felt were significant rather than being told what to do. They said it was very empowering to be trusted to deliver a campaign and make decisions. Um, and they said how they learned many skills along the way. The student was actually they changed the bottle usage in their college to reduce plastic waste, and they were really happy that actually they made such an impact that a large institution like school and college actually took it forward to reduce plastic. So they they saw the difference in their project. Oh, sorry, I press do apologize. So um, part of the project they did a consultation. And the, I'll just go through a couple of the slides of what they actually found. So this, they asked um, over 100 young people what their thoughts were around environmental issues. So they asked them first what they were aware of. And you can see from the pie chart, there was lots of different suggestions. And the top, top four really were global warming, littering, pollution and clean energy. So they're the main ones they'd heard about prior to the project. Uh, and then they asked a bit about where they get the information from. So one of the main ones was schools, which contradicts what Newcastle University students found. So actually, locally in Middlesbrough, a lot of schools are doing a lot of work around environmental and climate change, which is great for our area. And it shows that other, area, other schools in the northeast might not be following suit. Uh, and they said also they found um, a lot of information online, which I suppose is no surprise to us. One of the law answers, it was only two, they actually get, a, they've learned about it at home. So there's actually a gap in young people and the home life around the discussion on environmental issues and how to tackle climate change. So it's not really getting discussed in home, home life. Then we talked about uh, what they want to get to know more about. So the main things for them, there was a lot, of, lot around pollution, like litter, plastic, air pollution. 
they wanted to look um they want to know about litter littering in general and a lot of it was the young people want to learn everything and anything really i think the, the young people spoke to were really keen to expand their knowledge so their last uh, slide on their consultation is what they're willing to engage in so the top ones were things like football paintballing horse riding which is very typical with young people they do want to take part of those outdoor sports as activities but there was quite a lot who wanted to take part in litter pickering and that was quite a common theme through the one planet pioneer project that a lot of young people really want to do community-based work so litter picking in the area they lived in so they wanted to start from home in that sense the next one I was going to look at is down to youth partnership so they are it's like a platform for young people to get to share their views and also make change of Darlington so they have 10,000 young people are part of this platform and the Darlington young MP sits in in the heart of this so what we we actually I went to them as a group and asked them um digitally I was explaining I was doing this PowerPoint and I wanted to get what they thought and what was important for them as in climate change environmental issues so this is what they came back to me at um so they said the most important issue to children and people across the world both now and the future is climate change caused a lot of floods droughts and the impact of this could be that people would unable to grow their own food they needed it will change all, all the lives We'll have to change our plans for climate change and see life threatening or see life threatening consequences. This is why we will push down to borough council to become carbon neutral by 2030 to change our future. So these young people got a really clear focus. They want to become carbon neutral by 2030, but this shows they've got a general concern that actually, if we don't do something now, what will the future look like? And that's a running theme as we go through these slides that young people generally are concerned about the future and how the environment is going to look for themselves. I'm so sorry, I keep pressing buttons. I do apologise. Um, so this programme started this, I believe, this year. Um, it probably has been mentioned already in this conference. So Climate Change Middlesbrough. So we're going to look at today around the youth voice element of this because quite a big project. So Hamilton Links and Actees are delivering on the young people's voice element of the Climate Change Middlesbrough. Their aim is to support work to ensure young people at the forefront. Uh, to change through development for like community programs so the idea is young people at the heart and the community are at the heart and they're going to look at intergenerational activities they want to uh, support program activities to shoot local young people's voices are heard and they're going to create a people's platform to do this and they'll be led by local people they want to do a whole system approach about creating connectedness between policies and action plans and make sure policymakers are part of all this and listening to what's being said Want to influence social norms through things like campaigns, social media, public events, and they also want to look at as, um, and engage with people and the wider community. And they're looking at um, increasing community engagement in areas of sustainable use, transport, domestic use, and natural environment. So, a part of this, they had to do some consultation before part of the funding application. So, Hamilton Links shared their their consultation. So this was from schools and youth clubs. So this is two quotes from two young people. One's from a school setting, one's from a youth club setting. So both very similar in theme all around animals. So the first one thinks about worry about animals being extinct. And they are quite worried about things like their local beach and how actually they access that to walk their dog. But if that disappears, what are they, meant to, what are they going to do? And the second one's very much about animals and the habitats. And what's their future? The next one we asked about um, are they concerned about climate change? And from the feedback, all young people are concerned who they spoke to. Um, so the first quote, a young person said that they are they are worried because you never know. People might be thinking about the work in future, but no one does it. Papa Gretna Thunberg is thinking about the environment now. Part of the world has already been affected by climate change, flooding, snow and bad weather. Look at the world in 20 years, wait, it won't be it won't be a world. So pretty powerful quote there and generally concerns about actually with all the flooding, all the environmental issues going on, how is the world going to look for themselves in 20 years? Because these young people were aged between 11 and 18. So, it, you know, it's definitely going to impact their future lives. And the second quote, again, about floods, but affecting people's homes. 
and the crops and the farmers. So they're really concerned about actually how it's going to affect our farmers, how our food production. So they were thinking, worried about that. So then um, a consultation, they asked you to about the top three things that we need to do as a, as a town as a whole, all of Middlesbrough. So these are kind of like the themes that came out of that. So they were saying we need to look at re renewable energy. Think about electric cars, public transport, how do we use bikes and walk, and walk more? They've suggested more cycle paths, look into planting trees. Think about become more energy efficient, so turn your lights off when you're not using them. A suggestion was about looking at greenhouse gases emissions and find out what's making them more and cut them down, reduce the use of that, and then buy, buy biodegradable products. The young people then were asked about what can they do as individuals and they do as a community, as a family. So they've said to buy less plastic. So when they go to the supermarket, look for products that aren't all wrapped in plastic. Think about how they can educate themselves, what they identify as not everybody knows. It's all about environmental issues. So how can we educate others about less pollution, having more allotments, think about our bins, our, you know, collecting water. How can we how can that help? Use less electricity about um, decrease not not littering, having more green spaces. Um, think about community litter pick days, just one together to support their local area, make more electric cars and not cutting the trees down. So that was their consultation from those young people and that's fed into this new programme and that those young people are now going to create projects around that. So looking a bit further afield, um, Youth Focus Northwest they're similar to my organisation, but they do the northwest of the country. And they've been doing a lot um, around climate change young people for quite a few years now. Um, and we do look to them as an example that. Um, sorry, I'm just checking the time. Yeah, so we've got like just 10 minutes. So what they they do a lot around, they've been doing for quite a few years. As my organisation has been looking into this topic, we've been using them as a bit of a good practice for across the country. So this this year, they did a Green Summit 2020. It was an online four-day conference. They've done it in the past. Previously would have been face-to-face, -face, but obviously the current climate they couldn't do. So this year, the young people decided on four themes for the conference. So like I said, it was a Monday to Thursday conference. And they did, their themes were green spaces, recycling plastic, climate change, and green transport. And the link at the bottom will take you take you to the, the conference and it has videos so if you do have some spare time which i know is sometimes a bit of a luxury if you don't if you want to google youth focus northwest and the green summit 2020 you'll be able to see what they actually did across the four days and they, and they did a lot a lot of people did attend um so youth focus northwest have been working a lot with the energy companies and they've been offering a lot of expert help with to the young people around like certain terminology, what things might mean and what it means to them as a business. And actually, um, the young people are starting to influence their action plans. So their corporate social responsibility, how they can do more for their local community. And actually, the Scottish Power Power Foundation, which is one of the main energy suppliers over the Northwest, actually funded Youth Focus Northwest to deliver a pilot. So they call the pilot Pioneers of Sustainable Hope Scheme, so POSH for short. And the idea is young people, the members, would create local campaigns and charters on the impact of local policy and practice. Um, it's become really successful and um, they are looking to get further funding to like expand it more. And the Greater Manchester Mayor, Andy Burnham, has actually been part of these and is watching those videos and actually is working with those young people actually to think about how they can influence his action plans around um, climate change for the for greater Manchester so they've really made links with those in power who can make those changes and you know, those young people in a position now to make some influence which is great so the the create mini videos and the idea of the mini, mini videos is on a particular topic so young people choose a topic they design videos they're trained how to film and edit it and they'll learn all those skills um, so they've done four so far and they've got another seven planned. So to date they've done reducing carbon footprint, sustainable housing, uh, fuel poverty and sustainable energy. So the idea is young people can educate others, educate their peers, educate um, their parents. That was a big thing for the young people that 
they didn't feel the parents had the information so by creating a really short video it was quite an easy thing to watch and very accessible for other people so i've got about two minutes left so i've quickly like there was more videos i wanted to show you but i'm just conscious of time and unfortunately uh, we haven't got as long as we thought so i wanted to leave some final thoughts to everybody so david, david attenborough did an interview and if you youtube him you'll see the video um fortunately i don't have the time to show you but the quotes he said were young people are, are the great hope it's their world and it's tomorrow i won't be there they will be which i think is a really powerful message david attenborough is definitely a role model when it comes to environmental issues climate change he's definitely an advocate and the fact that he's recognizing people are the steps is brilliant and hopefully through all the work everyone's doing across the country we can really take that on board so i really wanted an opportunity for people to share uh, their their things um so i'm just looking through the chat because i didn't see it before so i do apologize so i'm just looking through but if anyone to share we've got a couple of minutes left of things they're doing in their area or their work that would be absolutely brilliant yeah so stella really good point uh, about the gender saying we should also maximize young women's interests not just focus on male yeah really good point completely agree with that um and Ron about um genders so yeah really good point not all people identify male and female so actually potentially some more work needs to be done around that about actually what um the language we use so yeah really good point 2030 yeah definitely it's, a, it's quite far off but i think we'll get down so we'll get there interest of the green jobs don't feature in the survey's answers yeah really good point definitely macmillan academy id is the jerusalem school they sell water in cardboard cartons have tutor group litter picking sessions uh, and the lights lights in the lights in the classroom only on when you need to be on yeah excellent i know macmillan can we do a lot in their school I think that's quite interesting from the Newcastle Uni research. Actually, um, they spoke to a lot of people more up the north, northeast, and those schools aren't doing as much as we are doing down here, which is great for us in the area. Mm -hmm.